Hello world, Russia's missile alert system was hacked, Putin's speech was DDoSed, and GoDaddy suffered an enormous breach. That's all coming up in today's roundup of cybersecurity tech news. Emergency alerts warning of impending missile strikes have been playing on radio stations across Russia. This wasn't a test. It was a genuine missile alert that played on numerous radio stations. But luckily for residents, it was a false alarm. But it wasn't caused by someone in a control room pressing the wrong button by mistake, just like what happened in Hawaii back in 2018. This was the work of a bad actor. Exactly how they did it is a bit of a mystery. One idea is that this was the work of a pirate's radio station, i.e. some guy sticking an aerial on his roof just looking to cause a bit of havoc. But that's unlikely, because almost a dozen cities spanning a thousand miles were affected, way too big of an area for just some guy with an aerial on his roof. Russian state media reported that this incident wasn't isolated to radio. People also received text messages telling them to seek shelter, pretty much confirming that the underlying emergency alert system was somehow breached, with it being reported that this was done via an attack on the infrastructure of a satellite operator. Anonymous related Twitter accounts have of course taken responsibility for it, but anonymous Twitter accounts take responsibility for everything, so take that with a pinch of salt. The Russian emergency alert system isn't alone in being targeted. Back in 2013, a similar system at several TV stations in Montana and Michigan were hacked to play an emergency alert message warning about an impending zombie apocalypse. Civil authorities in your area have reported that the bodies of the dead are rising from their graves and attacking the living. Follow the messages on screen that will be updated as information becomes available. In that case, it was a default password which made the takeover possible. Also, a few months back, critical vulnerabilities were discovered in the decoder boxes that many American TV stations use to relay these emergency alert messages. I'll make sure to link my video on that at the end of this video. Putin was giving his annual address to the Russian nation a few days ago. The speech was much anticipated, expected to include clues about how Russia was going to proceed with the war. However, halfway through, the Russian state broadcaster's stream of the speech went dark. The stream was quickly replaced with a message saying that technical work was in progress. However, it is a little hard to believe that any technical work was planned to coincide with what was slated to be a historic event. And we soon learned what really happened when the IT army of Ukraine took responsibility for the disruption via their Telegram channel, a claim that was corroborated by Russian state media. This wasn't a sophisticated takedown. It was achieved with a simple DDoS attack that was made possible via the IT army's global network of volunteers who donate their bandwidth to the IT army's botnet, which is as simple as downloading and installing their software. Not something I recommend, by the way. DDoSing, if you weren't aware, is illegal. And your ISP probably won't be too thrilled with the idea of you saturating your connection to dunk on Putin. However, this operation is a window into the tit-for-tat world of voluntary botnets that have been trading blows ever since the war in Ukraine began, with the IT army of Ukraine on one side and on the other their nemesis, Killnet, a Russian-lined group which operates in a similar way. Now, I don't cover this topic much because whilst there is a lot that goes on in this bubble, it tends to be rather repetitive and the attacks are almost always just designed to get media attention rather than do anything impactful. For example, in the last couple of weeks, Killnet attacked hospitals across the US, creating headlines like this. Russian hackers target US hospitals in huge cyber attack. What does sound pretty scary resulted in just a few hospital websites going offline for a few hours. Actual patient services were completely unaffected. Also in Killnet news, about a week ago there was a major disruption at German airline Lufthansa. Thanks to an IT failure, there were scenes of chaos in European airports as flights were grounded and those already in the air had to be diverted. Later that day, Killnet took responsibility, saying it was down to one of their DDoS attacks, using the opportunity to create memes of dubious quality. But what was claimed to have been a case of Russian international cyber espionage was in reality caused by an accidentally cut fiber optic cable. Construction work on a railway line was the real pub here, creating an outage affecting whole areas of Frankfurt, with Kilnet seizing the opportunity to get some airtime. However, Kilnet has actually attacked airports before, launching an array of DDoS attacks last October against American airports. 
But just like in the hospital attacks, the only result was public facing websites going dark for a few hours. Actual airport functions were unaffected. GoDaddy has just suffered an enormous intrusion. Well, they haven't really just suffered it because it's been going on for the past three years. This is bad. GoDaddy explains that in early December 2022, we started receiving a small number of customer complaints about their websites being intermittently redirected. The intermittent redirects were happening on seemingly random websites hosted on our cPanel shared hosting servers and were not easily reproducible by GoDaddy, even on the same website. As it turns out, hackers had infiltrated GoDaddy's cPanel servers, and instead of straight up taking over customers' websites, the hackers instead programmed in a probability that every so often someone tried to visit a GoDaddy hosted site, it would redirect that visitor to a malicious domain, making it seem like the website was just glitching rather than it being hacked. This way, their operation could go undetected for a lot longer than if they just outright started taking over domains. GoDaddy has been pretty quiet about this breach. In fact, it looks like they disclosed it in what is probably the quietest way possible. So to find this statement, you have to scroll all the way down to their footer, go to Newsroom, and you're not gonna find anything in this overview or even in the press releases, you have to specifically go to GoDaddy News. And even then, this statement leaves out some key information that you can only find in their recently filed 10K form. A 10K form is a comprehensive annual report that publicly traded companies in the US are legally required to file. Their latest one is 139 pages long, and hidden away on page 30, there is some interesting information about this intrusion. Here, GoDaddy starts talking about previous breaches they've experienced in the past few years. The one in March 2020, when threat actors compromised the hosting login creds of 28,000 customers. Then they bring up another breach they suffered in November 2021, which saw 1.2 million of GoDaddy's WordPress customers affected. Things like emails, credentials, and SSL private keys were all exposed. It leaves you wondering why GoDaddy is bringing up these past intrusions, but we soon get our answer. After connecting the dots, GoDaddy realized all three hacks are linked and were carried out by the same threat actor. Whether that means the same threat group kept on coming back for more or that they retained persistent access to GoDaddy's systems for the past three years is unclear. It's also not clear if GoDaddy has even notified affected customers. I do unfortunately have a site hosted with them and I haven't received anything. I say unfortunately because I actually meant to cancel it but just forgot at the last renewal. In fact, migrating completely away from GoDaddy is something I've been procrastinating over for years, but now I definitely have some motivation. Because GoDaddy does kinda suck. I mean, even if we put these breaches to one side, the sheer amount of time I've spent on the phone with GoDaddy's technical support over basic things like DNS changes is actually, well, I was going to say comical, but it's actually kinda depressing. I don't know anyone who has a good thing to say about them. What was a pioneer in the web hosting landscape 20 years ago now just seems to be riding on their legacy reputation. So whilst I like to try and keep these videos bias free, here I'm making an exception. If you're thinking of GoDaddy, just don't. This video is brought to you by PlexTrack, who are offering you a free one month trial of their premier cybersecurity reporting and collaboration platform. Get started today to learn why the best offensive security teams trust PlexTrack. PlexTrack empowers users to build better reports in half the time, exponentially increasing ROI and time savings, to aggregate findings from all their tools by consolidating the testing process into one platform, creating a single source of truth, and to maximize their reusable report content, like findings, write-ups, and narratives, improving consistency across the team. With PlexTrack, you'll become more efficient and effective, delivering better results from every engagement. Ready to elevate your reporting, improve collaboration across teams and demonstrate real progress? Spend more time hacking and less time reporting with PlexTrack. Claim your free month of the PlexTrack platform exclusively for Satonic viewers using the link in the video description. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one.